And welcome back. Today we got the Math 3 7.5 notes, transformations of parabolas. Okay, so this is just a fancy way of saying that we're going to be shifting our parabolas. Uh, in our previous sections, the parabolas all had a, a vertex at the origin at 0, 0. Well, now we're going to start moving these around a little bit. Okay, so first, a few key things to remember. If our equation looks something like this, y equals x squared. So it's y to the first power equals x squared, and it's a positive a value. And well, this is going to be opening up. Okay, so something like that. If it's y equals negative x squared, so if it's the negative a value and it's y equals, then that one's going to be opening down. So those are our two up-down parabolas. Uh, next, if it's x equals and it's a positive a value times y squared, well, x equals and positive a value is going to be opening to the right. You know, just something like that. And then our last case, if it's x equals and it's a negative a value, that's going to be opening to the left. Okay, so we want to be able to quickly identify what's our parabola going to look like. And then one important thing, no matter which one of these four scenarios it is, uh, we always need to know this equation here for our focal length. That's always going to help us find our focus, our directrix, and our focal chord endpoints. So we'll just label it. This is our focal length. I'll put it below. Okay, so that's just our focal length there. All right, and then something that... You should already know, but just a quick reminder, uh, when you move horizontally, so left and right, the x coordinate changes. When you move vertically, up or down, the y coordinate changes. Okay, so again, we're going to see stuff moving around, uh, so we just want to make sure we know which, which uh, is changing, which variable x or y. All right, well, let's jump right into example number one, because really, this is pretty much the exact same thing we were doing uh, in section 7.4, uh, but again, the vertex is just going to be in a different location. So we're doing everything else the same. All right, so we want to graph this parabola. Okay, well, the first thing we want to do is get it in the proper form. Okay, we want it in, in vertex form, like it says here. So what's that going to look like? All right, so uh, we don't have a ton of space. We'll try to utilize this as best we can. Uh, the first thing we want to do is identify, actually, before we do any work, is identify which variable are we going to get by itself. Okay, so, you know, like we can see up here, which variable is always by itself? Well, the one raised to the first power. And then on the other side, the equal sign, we've got the squared part, okay? Now, in these equations, you know, the squared part isn't always going to be just x squared or just y squared. It might be a binomial. So here we've got x plus 4 squared. And then over here, we've got y the first. Uh, you know, even if I multiplied it out, that would not end up being squared. So in other words, we want to get the uh, y to the first by itself, okay? So I want to get rid of the 8, and I want to get rid of that plus 1 there, okay? Now, sure, we could distribute the 8. Uh, but then we'd have to end up dividing by 8 later. So instead, uh, right off the bat, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 1 8. I was already in parentheses, didn't really need to do that, 1 8. So we're just kind of squeezing it in there. And then, well, the 8 and the 1 8, those would reduce, and I would just get y plus 1 equals, and on the other side of the equation, just leave it as 1 8, <clears throat> excuse me, as 1 8 times the squared part. And then I can see that 1 8 is going to be my a value. Okay. Uh, and then last step, subtract 1 from both sides. Minus 1, stick over here, minus 1. And we go y equals 1 8 times x plus 4 squared minus 1. Now we've got our equation in descriptive form, uh, otherwise known as vertex form. Okay. All right. Now, now that we have it in this form that we wanted in, what's our vertex going to be? Okay. So you can either think of, you know, the the whole shifting method. Um, you, know, you know, since I have x plus four, this is going to be shifted left four, and then the minus one is going to shift us down one. So left four down one is going to be at negative four comma one. I'm sorry, comma negative one. Uh, or another way to think about getting your vertex is what can I plug in to make the squared part come out zero? So ignore this extra stuff here. Just focus on the squared part. So what's going to make the squared part come out zero when I plug in what for x? Negative 4. And when I plug in negative 4, well, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, squared is 0, times 1 eighth is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. So we get y is negative 1 when x is negative 4. So you can think of it either way, but either way we're going to get negative 4 comma negative 1 for our vertex. Okay, so then there's our vertex. Uh, and then next, I need to find the focus directrix and focal cord endpoints. Well, for all that stuff, I just need to know my focal length. So what is my focal length? And like our equation says up here, our focal length is going to be C. 
and the equation for that is 1 over 4a. So that's going to be 1 over 4 times, and then our a value for this problem, scoop this up here, uh, our a value is 1 8. So then I get 1 over, well, 4 times 1 8 is 4 8, which reduces to 1 half. And then how many times does a half go into 1? Twice. Or remember, dividing by anything is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So 1 divided by 1 half is the same as 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, so then our focal length is just 2. Okay, so then we're going to go 2 units from the vertex to our focus. And then 2 units which way? Well then, take another look at our equation. Which way is this parabola opening? Well, it's y equals, so it's either up or down. And it's a positive a value, so yeah, it's opening up. And since it's positive 2, yeah, we're going to go up 2 units to our focus. So our focus is going to be right there at, and we can just use the grid here, negative 4 comma positive 1. Okay, so we got our focus. And then since our focal length is 2, we went up 2 to the focus. We're going to go down 2 to our directrix. And since this is an up-down parabola, we're going to have a horizontal line as our directrix. Since it's a horizontal line, it's going to be y equals. And what's the coordinates of every uh, y value for every point on this line here? Well, no matter where we're at on this line, y is always at negative 3. Okay, so again, just two units below the vertex, which has uh, a y value of negative 1. So if we go down 2 from here, we get to negative 3. All right, and then next are focal coordinate points. Okay, those are going to be two points. Remember, your focal coordinate points are always going to share either an x or a y value with your focus. Okay, I went up to my focus. I got to go out to my focal coordinate points. So that means they're going to have the same y value, the same height uh, as our focus, which is at 1. So it's going to be something comma 1 and something comma 1. And then let's see what our, our x value is going to be. Well, our focal length is 2, so then i got to go double that out to the right and out to the left. So I'm going to go right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, which puts me at an x value of 0. So we'll plot that point and label it, 0, comma 1. And then if I go uh, from negative 4, comma 1, left 4, that's going to be negative 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so negative 8, comma 1 is our other focal cord endpoint. Okay, so then now we have all the pieces that we want. Uh, and then now we also have our vertex and two other points. We can get a sketch of our parabola. Okay, so something about like that. All right, so again, very similar to what we were doing in the last section. Uh, the only difference is now our vertex is moving around. Okay, and the parabolas might be up and down. They might be sideways. This one was up and down. All right, let's take a look at example number two. All right, so very similar, we want to graph the parabola. Well, first of all, I don't want it in this form. Uh, I want to get it in either y equals form or x equals form. Okay, so take a look at your equation. Which variable is raised to the first power? Well, if I multiply this out, I would have y squared. So then this is my squared part, which means I want to get x by itself this time. Okay, and then that's not hard to do. I just want to multiply both sides. Now the entire left side, because that is there are two parts there. I get the squared part plus 48. I want to multiply both sides by negative 1 16. Okay. Uh, over here, the negative 1 16th and the negative 16, those just reduce to 1, so those go away. But on the left side of the equation, make sure you distribute that negative 1 16th to both parts. Okay, now I don't have to distribute inside the parentheses here, okay, because that's not the order of operations there. Uh, but just it would be negative 1 16th times the squared part, but also multiply it times that negative 48. I'm sorry, that positive 48, which is going to make it uh, negative 3. Okay, so anyways, these reduce, and we get x equals. Uh, and then it's going to be negative 1 16th times the squared part. And then negative 1 16th times positive 48 gives me negative 3. Okay, so then here's my equation now in descriptive form. Okay. All right, so what's the vertex going to be? Is it going to be negative 5 comma negative 3? Almost. Okay, that's a very easy mistake to make. Uh, but what are we plugging negative 5 in for here? Well, for y. So then my vertex is going to have a y value of negative 5. And when I plug in y is negative 5, I get x is negative 3. Okay, so be careful with that. 
when it's x equals instead of y equals, you know, your x and your y value are switched. Okay, so let's see, we got negative 3 comma negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hopefully this fits well in the graph. We're already towards the bottom there. Might be a little bit off. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, next, our focus, directrix, and focal cord endpoints. So for all of that stuff, we need our focal length. Okay, so again, the equation for that is C equals 1 over 4A. So that's going to be 1 over 4 times our A value, which for this problem is negative 1 16. Uh, equals, and then it gives us 1 over uh, 4 times negative 1 16th is negative uh, 4 16th, which is negative 1 4th. Uh, so how many times does a quarter go into 1? Oh, 4 times, so we get negative 4. Okay. In other words, dividing by uh, negative 1 4th is the same as multiplying by negative 4 over 1. So either way we get negative 4. Okay. So again, the negative just tells us that we're moving either down or left to our focus, okay? Because yeah, a distance can't be negative. That just kind of tells us which direction we're going. Uh, but we should already know that. Looking at our equation, it's x equals, so we know it's either opening to the left or to the right. And since it's a negative a value, yeah, we should be opening to the left. Okay, so then we want to go left four units, one, two, three, four, to our focus, and we'll mark that with a star. Okay, and then we want to go right four units, one, two, three, four, to our directrix, which this time is going to be a vertical line. Okay, so now we've got a couple of pieces of our graph. Uh, let's label the focus and directors before we move on. Uh, you can just use the grid. We're at negative 7, comma, negative 5 there. Which looks good because we know our focal length was 4. Uh, so we went 4 to the left from negative 3, comma, negative 5. And then, yeah, that would put us at negative 7, comma, negative 5. Great. And then our directrix uh, is going to be a vertical line. So that's going to be x equals something. And then what's the x value for every point on this line, well, no matter how far up or down we go, we're always over 1. So x equals 1, okay, which is right because, again, we want to go to the right 4 uh, from our vertex. So add 4 to negative 3, we get positive 1. Okay, looks good. All right, next, our focal cord endpoints. Okay, remember, they're always going to share either an x or a y value uh, with your focus. Okay, so this thing's going to, you know, open this way. In other words, we went left to the focus, I got to go up and down to my focal cord endpoints, which means they're going to have the same, you know, they're, they're going to be the same distance over. They're going to have the same x value as my focus. So I know it's going to be negative 7 comma something and negative 7 comma something. And then, you know, how far up and down from my focus do I have to go? Well, it's always double your focal length. So our focal length, uh, this distance here was 4. So then I want to go up and down 8 from my focus. So I'm going to go up 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to be way up here. And then that same distance would be <clears throat> way at the bottom of our page. In fact, it probably wouldn't really even fit very good. Um, but that's okay. Don't worry too much about the sketch. Um, mainly we want to be able to label these things correctly. Okay, so from um, negative 7, uh, comma, negative 5. Okay, we wanted to go up 8, which is going to add 8 to our y value. So it might be easier if we label this thing negative 7 comma negative 5. We want to go up 8 and we want to go down 8 from that point. So then I want to add 8 to negative 5, which is going to put me at positive 3, which, yeah, that's right there. And then I want to subtract 8 from that. So negative 5 minus 8 is going to be negative 13. Okay, so then that's where my two um, focal cord endpoints are going to be. Okay, and then, yeah, the bottom one didn't quite fit on the graph, but, you know, it's just going to be a really wide parabola that's going to look, you know, something like that. Okay, and this is going to keep going again. Didn't quite fit on the graph, uh, so it's not super symmetrical looking, but, but the important thing is that we label everything correctly. Uh, another thing we can always do if we want to make it fit better, we could have changed the scale on our graph maybe, uh, but since these were already numbered for us, we just left it alone. Okay, so again, don't worry too much about the graph. The important thing is that we label these correctly. All right, let's take a look at the next page. A few more examples to go. All right, next one, graph the parabola. All right, well, fortunately, this one is already in descriptive form for us, so that's good. We can list our vertex right away. So what's the vertex going to be? 
Well, you might be thinking 3, negative 5, but be careful. Our y value is going to be 3. Our x value is going to be negative 5 when y is 3. Okay, let's go ahead and plot that. Negative 5, 3. Should be right there. And then next to find our focus, direct direction, and focal coordinate points. Just like the other problems, we need to know what our focal length is. Okay, so we need to use our equation that we've been using before. C equals 1 over 4a, which is going to be 1 over 4 times something. And then what's our a value here? That's going to be 1 18. So then we get 1 over uh, 4 18, which reduces to 2 over 9. Okay, and then remember 1 divided by 2 over 9 is the same as 1 times 9 over 2, so we get 9 over 2, which if we want to write it as a decimal because it's not going to be rounding, it's an exact decimal, uh, that's 4.5, so we can put 4.5 if you want to. Okay, so our focal length is not always going to be uh, a whole number, you know, this one's not too bad though, 4.5, we could work with that. Okay, so uh, from my uh, vertex, I need to go 4.5 units in which direction? Well, this is x equals, so it's either opening left or right, and it's a positive a value, so it's opening to the right, which is correct. Um, positive c value means you're going either up or to the right. So here we're going to go right four and a half units to our focus. So one, two, three, four and a half will put us right there, uh, which is going to be at negative one half comma three. Okay, and then our directrix is going to be four and a half units to the left of our vertex. So one, two, three, four and a half will be right there, which we can see on our graph uh, is at a uh, x value of negative nine and one half. Let's do uh, x equals negative. You can put nine and one half. Um, you can write it as a mixed number, that's fine. A negative 9.5 decimals are, are, are fine. Uh, you know, mixed number, decimal, fraction, doesn't matter. Okay, so x equals negative 9.5. That's where our director is. All right, and then for our focal cord endpoints, again, this is something that might not completely fit on our graph. The important thing is that we label them correctly. Okay, where are my focal cord endpoints going to be? Okay, so from my focus... Since I went to the right to get to my focus, i got to go up and down to get to my focal cord endpoints, which means they're going to have the same which value as my focus. Well, the same x value. They're the same you know, distance over. They're both going to be at an x value of negative 1 half. Okay? And then from my focus, which we'll label it here so we don't have to keep looking back here, at negative 1 half, comma, 3. Well, I want to go uh, up twice my focal length and down twice my focal length. So then I'm going to be adding and subtracting from the y value of my focus. And then our focal length is four and a half. So then double that, double nine over two would be nine. Okay, so then I want to go up nine from here. Well, three plus nine puts me at 12. So negative one half comma 12 is going to be one focal, focal cord endpoint. And then three minus nine would put me at negative six. Okay. So one would be way off the page, and one would be just barely off the graph a little bit. But, you know, this would just be a really wide parabola opening to the right. So if you want to put a little, you know, we don't have to draw much of it. It's going to be something like that going to the right. That's fine. Don't worry. Again, don't worry too much about the sketch, especially if it doesn't fit on there very well. But we do want to make sure that all of these are labeled correctly. All right, so there's example number three. Uh, let's move on to the last two. Last two are a little bit different. Now we're going to be writing the equation given some information about the graph. Okay, so example number four. It says graph the parabola with a focus of negative three comma two and a directrix of x equals one. Write the equation of the parabola in descriptive form. Okay, so we're always going to put it in descriptive form. There are other forms of the equation um, that they might ask you for. Um, usually they will give you the general form of that equation with all the letters in it, um, which is why I left these things on here, because uh, we can find the focal length. That's easy. And then if they want C, oh, well, sorry, if we have C and they want 2C, fine, just double this number. If they want uh, 4C, just quadruple this number or double this number. So even though we're not going to use these pieces very often, because um, we find the equation in different ways, uh, you know, just keep in mind, if they ask this stuff, we can find it. 
We're just, we just don't typically use it very much. All right, anyways, let's uh, draw the things that they gave us. They said our parabola has a focus at negative 3, 2. So we're going to mark that for a little star there. Uh, and a directrix at x equals 1. So we're going to go right 1 and then draw our vertical line. Okay, so here is our focus on our directrix. Okay, so just from these two pieces, we can already tell a couple things. Uh, first of all, where, which direction is our parabola going to open? Well, I know it's got to you know, kind of wrap around the focus, and it's never going to touch the directrix, so it's got to be opening to the left. So that tells me a couple things. It's going to be an x equals equation. Uh, it's also going to be uh, a negative a value because it's opening to the left. Okay? All right, let's get some more details here, though. Where is our focus going to be? I'm sorry, our focus and directrix, they gave us that piece. Uh, vertex is what I meant to say. Let's go ahead and label the focus and directrix that they gave us. Okay, so that stuff was given. Where's our vertex going to be? Well, in English, our vertex is always going to be right between the focus and the directrix. Okay, so let's see. These are one, two, three, four units apart. So then half that would be one, two. Our vertex should be right here. And then, yeah, it's right in the middle, and it's two units away from each uh, of the you know the focus and the directrix. Okay, so that puts us at negative one comma two for our vertex. Okay, and then knowing the vertex, that's going to give us a lot of our equation, because again, what's our equation going to look like? We already said it's going to be x equals. It's going to be some negative a value. We'll figure out that what that a value is in a minute, times something with y in it squared, and then plus or minus some other number. Okay, and then now that we know that our uh, vertex is at negative 1, 2. Well, that means when y is 2, x is negative 1. Okay, so then, um, in other words, to move up 2, i got to have y minus 2, because when I stick in y is 2, the squared part should come out 0. And when I do, I know x should be negative 1. Okay, so we've got most of the parts of our equation. The last thing I need is what a value goes here. Okay, well, to solve for a, we need an equation with a in it. Uh, so let's kind of section this little piece off here. Use a, a black marker, black pen. And then over here, we'll figure out what the a value is. Okay, so to find uh, a, I need an equation with a in it. So then we'll use our equation c equals 1 over 4a. Okay, uh, if I know what c is, I can plug it in and then solve for a. And then what is c? What is my, my focal uh, length? What is the distance from my vertex to my focus? Well, that's just the distance of 2. Now, technically, uh, it's negative 2 because we're going to the left two units. Okay, so you can stick in negative 2 or you can stick in positive 2 uh, because, you know, usually we think of distances as a positive number, which that's, that's correct. Okay, uh, but again, since we're going to the left, it should be negative 2. Okay, now if you forget to put in negative 2, you know, just check your equation at the end. We already know since it's opening to the left uh, that our equation should have a negative a value. So we already put that in there. Um, so you can use negative 2, you can use positive 2, doesn't really matter. Just make sure that your equation ends up with a negative a value. Okay, so let's see. Don't have a ton of space. Let's see if we can work this out in here. Uh, so this is going to be... Kind of just ignore this part. We're going to section this off again. Or I'll just do this little. Leads to. Okay, so this equation leads to what? Well, it's going to be negative 2 equals 1 over 4a. And then if we... Tell you what, I'm going to use scratch paper for the notes. Sorry if you guys don't have as much room as I do here. If we have negative 2 equals 1 over 4a, I'm just going to write it again. Well, how do we solve that equation? Well, first we want to get rid of the fraction, so we'll multiply both sides by the denominator. So multiply both sides by 4a. And then that will give us negative 8a equals 1. And then if we divide both sides by negative 8, We get a equals negative one eighth. Okay, so then there's our a value for our equation. Now remember, we already put the negatives because we already knew it was going to be negative. We just need the one eighth, so we put one eighth here, and now we've got our full equation. All right, and then real quick, just to fill these parts in, we already figured out that our c value was two. So then 2c would just be double that, would be 4. And then 4c would be double 2c, which would be 8. So if they want any kind of focal lengths or any pieces like that, oh, here we got, we got it there. Okay. 
All right, in fact, technically, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, because we were going to the left. All right. Anyways, moving on, last one. And you don't even need to really need to worry about finishing the drawing, uh, because to finish the, the sketch, I would need a couple more points. Uh, maybe my focal cord endpoints, maybe something else. But don't worry about it. They asked us to find the equation, uh, not to graph the parabola. Well, I guess they did say graph it, but don't worry about finishing your graph. What we really wanted here was the equation. So this is the answer we wanted. All right, <clears throat> and then last one here. Uh, let's write the equation of the parabola that has a focus at negative 7, comma, negative 5, and a directrix at y equals 1. All right, so let's see. Negative 7, comma, negative 5, that's going to be here. And actually, that is our focus, so we'll mark that with a star. And then our directrix is at y equals negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 and then draw a horizontal line. And we can go all the way across. All right, so just by looking at this little sketch here, what's our equation going to look like? Okay, well, I can see that it's going to be opening down because it can never touch the directrix, and it's going to kind of wrap around that focus. So it's going to be opening down, which means it's going to be, we'll put our answer at the bottom here. It's going to be y equals, and it's going to have a negative a value, and then it's got to have something with x in it, squared, and then plus or minus some other number. Okay, so what's going to go here and here? Well, we're going to get those two numbers from our uh, vertex once we find that. And then what's going to go here? Well, that's our a value. So we're going to need to solve for a a little bit later, just like we did before. But just from drawing the focus in the directrix, we already know it's going to look something like this. Okay? All right, next, where is our vertex? Well, in English, it's going to be right between the focus and the directrix. Uh, which, let's see, these are one, two, three, four units apart again. So then it's going to be two units away from each of them, which is going to put our vertex right there. Uh, at negative 7, comma, negative 3. Okay, so then there's our vertex. Okay, uh, so when x is negative 7, y is negative 3. So I know our y value is negative 3. When x is negative 7, and negative 7 plus 7 would make that squared part come out 0. Okay, so now I, I, I got those two parts of my equation. The last thing we need is just our a value. Then how do we find the a value? Well, we need an equation with a in it. Uh, so we can use the equation, do it in a different color here, c equals 1 over 4a, just like last time. Okay, And then let's see, what is our, a, our c value, I mean, going to be well, from our vertex to our focus, uh, it was a distance of 2 units. Okay, And then technically, since we were going down, it was negative 2 units. Okay, So then our c value is negative 2. Okay, well... This should look pretty familiar. We just solved that equation. When c is negative 2, we get negative 2 equals 1 over 4a. We want to solve that. We already know it's negative 1 eighth. Okay, so we don't need to do the algebra again. We just did it. We know our c value is going to be negative 1 eighth. Okay, because it would work out the same as it did on example number 4. So then we can stick in that a value of negative 1 eighth. And here we get our equation. For example, number five. Oops, sorry. Cut off the end there. So there's our equation for example number five. And then that's it. So again, very, very similar to uh, 7.4. The only difference is we're moving that vertex around from the origin. So you just got to be a little bit more careful uh, when you're when you're moving things around. Just be care make sure you're placing things in the right spot. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know in class.